and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of the Orange County Mayor's Veterans Advisory Council. Uh, that Veterans Advisory Council has 28 different veteran service organizations, uh, American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, and many, many others. And they represent over 84,000 veterans in Orange County. I get to lead their efforts, and, and it's been an honor to do so during the past five and a half years. And always supported magnificently uh, with the caring and compassion of our Orange County Mayor, Teresa Jacobs. And for that purpose, please give her a hand. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to serve those that serve and served. On behalf of Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs and the Orange County and City of Orlando Veterans Advisory Councils, welcome to the annual Orange County War Memorial Reef Presentation and Commemoration Ceremony. We come together every year on Memorial Day to pay homage and to honor all service members who made the ultimate sacrifice in safeguarding our freedoms. Normally this event is hosted in front of the memorial wall, but today the weather had different plans for us. The wall represents our service members of Orange County who have given their all for those freedoms. And today we take a moment to remember them. Before we proceed, I would like to recognize the Daughters of the American Revolution, All American Singers, directed by Ms. Claire Hassler. We appreciate your kind performance. Thank you. We also heard from the Winter Park High School Band Brass Quintet, directed by Mr. Christopher Blackmer. They will perform again later in the program. Thank you for being here. We are privileged to be joined by several elected officials and dignitaries today. State Senator Victor Torres, Jr., please stand. <laughs> State Representative Bobby Osuski. <laughs> Orange County Commissioner Betsy Vandele. <laughs> Orange County Commissioner a route love. <laughs> Orange County Commissioner Pete Clark. <laughs> Orange County Commissioner Emily Bonija. <laughs> Orange County School Board Member Kat Gordon. <laughs> go, Kat, go. Go, Kat, go. <laughs> Oh, it's an honor to work with you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oil, uh, Orange County Soil and Water Conservation Supervisor, Eric Rollins. <laughs> Are there any other elected officials in the audience that I may have missed? Additionally, we are joined by the Orange County Fire and Rescue, Chief Otto Drost. City of Orlando Police Department, Chief John Mina. I don't know, every time I mention that name, I go, hua! <laughs> An awesome veteran, awesome veteran. We thank you and your team for the great service you provide to our community every day as we pay tribute to our fallen soldiers this morning. Let us also remember it is not just our military troops that fight for our safety. It is also the brave work done by our local heroes, many of which have served in the military. Thank you again for your attendance. Now, please join me as we rise for the presentation of colors by the U.S. Army Orlando Recruiting Company. <clears throat> the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Command Sergeant Major Tommy Maldonado, in our national anthem performed by Cindy Clark of the Orange County Sheriff Office, Color Guard Post.
Ladies and gentlemen, please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land and of the free and the Please remain standing for the invocation offered by Ms. Eloise Hall, member of the Orange County Mayor's Veterans Advisory Council, a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Ms. Hall. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today we come before you to honor our day of remembrance. We remember to pray for our country. We remember those who gather today. May they have peace and comfort no matter their trials. We remember our troops. Guide them to find courage as they face the difficult decisions. Bring them home safely to their loved ones. We remember our veterans. Help them to make wise decisions and courageously face the day no matter the difficulty. We remember that today is not just about sales, beaches, and barbecues, but you have given us this day to honor those who sacrificed their lives and fortunes for our country and our freedoms. We remember that we are the land of the free because of the brave. We remember all those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. For all gave some, but some gave all. We remember. In his name, amen. amen. Please take your seats. Thank you, Ms. Hall. I am now honored to introduce Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs to provide us with a resolution. Mayor Jacobs has led this ceremony every year since she first took office in 2010. Throughout her tenure as mayor, as major, she has been unwavering in her support of veterans and their families. Mayor Jacobs champions efforts to end veterans' homelessness, advocate for mental health, and works tirelessly to help our region at the forefront of cultivating a robust ms and industry. Through her visionary leadership, she has consistently demonstrated that Orange County remains an inclusive and embracing community for veterans. Although this is her last year hosting us as mayor, we will never forget her unrelenting support. Mayor Jacobs.
Well, good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. I know the weather was a little testy out there, but I think this is probably one of our largest attendants. So I want to I want to thank you for remembering that this is, in fact, a sacred day. As President Lincoln once said, as he proclaimed that our soldiers who die in the in the service of our country have devoted the last full measure for the country and the and their community that they held so dear. Remembering those who have made the ultimate sacrifice is a sacred duty for each of us. And we must never forget their service. We must never forget the price that they paid and the price paid especially by their loved ones, those that are here with us today and those who have passed before them. And we also, of course, want to remember our Gold Star families. Gold Star families, if you're here, those of you who are here, please stand so that we can recognize and, and remember your sacrifice. Sadly, on this Memorial Day, armed conflicts continue in so many places throughout our world. But terrorists have brought these battlefields to our gathering places, to our streets, bringing the pain and the horror and the tragedy of war that once only our veterans saw. Today, average citizens are experiencing the evil and the horror of war. Of war. And what is most amazing about that is that in spite of the fact that our children are growing up seeing this, our young men and women are more compelled than they were before to respond. A close friend of our family. Sorry, I can do this. I've attended this ceremony for um, most of the years that I was a commissioner. I wanna thank all the commissioners that are here for attending. Um, I remember coming and being oftentimes the only elected official that was here, and that's why I'm appreciative, especially of our elected leadership and Senator, you especially for taking the time to be here. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but my first year in office as mayor, those of you who are here will remember that we lost a very close friend of the families, Mike McGahan. He had gone to college, he was my son's best friend. He had gone to college, he had graduated, he had gotten married, um, all, all the things that you would expect of a young man. And then he came home and told his parents that he was going to sign up for the military. And his father was a little stunned by that because there was no need to. He was a college graduate, he was married, his life was on its trajectory. And, um, but this young man, every member of his family before him had been in the military. And he had been, like my son, in about, I think, fifth or sixth grade when 9-11 happened. And that left an indelible mark on his soul. And it was for that reason that he decided that it was incumbent upon him not just to leave those who don't have an opportunity to go to college or those who don't have a career path. It wasn't just for them to serve. It was for all of us to serve. On his, um, on his dog tag, obviously, Michael um, died in the line of duty. On his dog tag, he had engraved, I heard the, the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? Then said I, Hear my Lord, send me. Book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8. So while I have attended this ceremony, and while it has meant a lot to me, when I lost someone who was like a second son to me, I began to imagine just the, the small fraction of pain that the families have felt, not just the families that are here, but the families throughout history who, know, who knew that their sons and daughters willingly gave their ultimate and their all on the field of battle in love of country and in love of family. These are people that go not out of hatred, not like the terrorist who would bring such horror and pain to the innocent. These are people who go out of love and defense and knowing that but for them, our freedoms that we cherish, our quality of life, our country as we know it, would cease to exist. So it is for this reason that today is not a day about hot dogs, though I love a good hot dog. And I won't begrudge anyone for having one. Thank you so much, Allie. I won't begrudge anyone for having one later today. But this is in true, truly a sacred day. And 
with that, I would ask all of us just to take a moment of silence to remember all those who have lost a loved one that are here with us today and around the nation. Thank you. And I would also like to recognize our Orange County Mayor Veterans Advisory Council for organizing this memorial ceremony and for their leadership. They are a constant reminder to us of what we need in our veterans community. Thank you, Colonel Moreiro, and everyone else who has worked over the years to make sure that veterans are always front and center in Orange County's minds, hearts, and actions. In remembering those who lost who we lost in service to our country is also an honor to recognize our active military and veterans who are here with us today. Anyone who is here today that is a veteran or active military, please stand so we can recognize you. Thank you. God bless you. And thank you. Thank you for being here, but thank you for being there when we needed you. And finally, it is my privilege and my honor to present a resolution on this sacred day. Whereas on Memorial Day, the citizens of Orange County join their fellow Americans in remembering with gratitude and respect the soldiers, sailor, sailors, armed arm, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen of the United States Armed Forces who answered the call of duty and made the ultimate sacrifice for the peace of our nation and the world. And whereas these courageous warriors are remembered for their selfless contributions in the name of freedom, their faithful service, and their devotion to duty and country, and whereas more than one million Americans have died on the battlefields at home and abroad, and more than 140,000 citizens have been held as prisoners of war and are declared missing in action. And whereas our country honors the sacrifice of these heroes' efforts to lay the foundations of peace around the world, we will forever mourn their loss. And whereas the Congress of the United States of America, by joint resolution approved on May 11, 1950, requested the President issue a proclamation calling on the people of the United States to observe each Memorial Day as a day of prayer for permanent peace and designating a period on that day when the people of the United States might unite in prayer. And whereas on May 28, 2018, the people of Orange County, Florida, will pay special tribute to those service men and women who called this county their home and whose names will forever be inscribed at the Orange County War Memorial. And those names, since I have taken office, are too many. As I mentioned before, in 2011, we lost 2nd Lieutenant Michael McGahan. We lost Corporal Patrick Deans. And we lost Sergeant, Staff Sergeant Robert Miller. In 2012... We lost two more members of the U.S. Army, Private First Class Alberto Abode and Private First Class Alfred Vaccarino. And in 2013, we added one more as we lost Army Specialist Marcos Cintron. We have been blessed that since 2013, in this county, we have not lost another one of our precious members of the military. So now, therefore, I, Teresa Jacobs, by virtue of the authority vested in me as your Orange County Mayor, do hereby resolve that Memorial Day, Monday, May 28, 2018, be observed as a day of tribute to our nation's fallen heroes and call on all citizens to observe this day with the appropriate ceremonies, activities, and solemnity done and ordered this 28th day of May 28, May 2018. And I thank you all again for being here, for joining Orange County in saluting all those who have served our wonderful land, and for all of those who have served and continue to serve. God bless you. You are in our hearts and prayers every day. Thank you. Thank you again, Mayor Jacobs. I'll take a moment of personal privilege and say it, it has truly been an honor to serve as the chair for your council and to speak on behalf of the Orange County Veterans, Veterans Advisory Council. When we say that we are so grateful for your council support and leadership these last eight years, the many veteran service organizations here represented have witnessed that you have impacted more veteran families than you may have realized. Thank you for your public service and work to support the veteran community. 
I trust that in your next elected position, you will uh, continue to serve as proudly as and, and as greatly as you have done during the past eight years. What an honor. I also retire uh, this year from uh, the chair uh, position for the Veterans Advisory Council and um, uh, other things to do. But uh, you have a ways to go, and we're blessed by having you in the next elected position. Thank you so much. It is now a privilege to call upon Sergeant Fred Robinson, who will introduce our keynote speaker this morning. Sergeant Robinson is representing the City of Orlando Veterans Advisory Council, and we are proud to welcome him today as our respective councils collaborate in honoring our veterans. Sergeant Robinson. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank everyone today for your attendance of the Orange County Memorial Day ceremony. Today is a sacred day that we honor and respect the over one million men and women who paid the ultimate price for our nation's freedom. I had the privilege of meeting today's keynote speaker, Mr. Ali Braswell, in 2012. He served 12 and a half years in the United States Marine Corps, was in the U.S. Army Reserve's ambassador for three years from 2010 to 2013, and manager of corporate social responsibility for Disney Parks and Resorts. He also served as president and CEO of the Central Florida Urban League from 2010 through 2014, is author of Rekindling the Passion, and a contributor to the National Urban League's 2012 State of Black America on veterans' issues. Ali also served three years on the Secretary of Veterans Affairs Advisory Committee for Minority Veterans, is the recipient of the 2015 Orlando Business Journal Veterans of Influence Award, recipient of the 2017 Whitney M. Jung Jr. Service Award, and is the 2018 Chairman of the Whitney M. Jr. Luncheon that funds scouting for our youth in urban areas. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Ali Braswell. Good morning. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be in front of you and an honor truly to celebrate 645,000 Americans who have paid that ultimate price for our freedom. The protocol has been set to all the dignitaries, to our state senator, our elected officials, to our military, to our leaders that serve and protect us. Again, good morning from the Secretary of the Army. I have the privilege of serving as a civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for this region. That's a bit of a dichotomy because I am a United States Marine. Hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and hua for the Army. Let me make sure I get it on both sides. I thought it fitting to start with a poem. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place in, in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high, if you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Ladies and gentlemen, I thought that fitting because on this day in this year, we mark the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. In Flanders Fields is considered to be one of the most iconic poems of World War I, written by Lieutenant Colonel John McCrae after his friend, Lieutenant Alexis Helmer, was killed in action in the Flanders region of Belgium in 1915. When this poem was written, the United States had yet to enter the First World War. By its end, there were more than 18 million military and civilian deaths, including nearly 120,000 Americans. Last year, we began a two-year-long centennial commemoration of America's involvement in World War I. 
In 2018, we will culminate that commemoration on the 100th anniversary of its end, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. As we mark a century since the end of the war to end all wars, we are reminded of the true cost. American doughboys fought in 13 battlefield campaigns, suffering more than 300,000 killed, wounded, or missing. One of the first American battles in the war took place in May and June of 1918. The Ein Marne campaign, the French names of other battles such as Chateau Thierry, Catigny, Marne, and Belle Wood will forever represent the bravery and sacrifice of American soldiers and Marines. And that's why this day is so important to all Americans. Memorial Day gives us the opportunity to stop and think about those brave Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our great nation and pay a well-deserved tribute to those who ensured us for the freedoms that we now enjoy. Many of you may know of the history of this holiday. If so, you know too that it's not just about the backyard barbecues, going to the beach, the latest Macy's sale, uh, the Best Buy splurge. It truly is about the sacrifice that many have made and others are making each and every day. Amen. Memorial Day was recognized as Decoration Day, a time to honor the Civil War dead by decorating their graves with flowers. In proclaiming that the first Decoration Day in 1868, General John Logan, National Commander of the Grand Army of our great republic, wrote that we should not only remember those who died in defense of their country, but to also renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they left among us, the widows and orphans. I would also extend that to our first responders. Because each and every day you don a uniform and go out upon the streets, the county of Orange, and you make sure that we're safe, that we return home from work, that we make it to school safely. To the soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, we would not have the freedoms that we have because we all know in this room that freedom is not free. Today, we continue to honor those left behind, those who paid a very personal price for us in our nation, our ghosts, our families that have already been recognized. Please stand once again, because we can never, ever pay that debt of gratitude to you. We are humbled by your sacrifice, inspired by your resilience, and grateful for your continued service to our communities. As we take this day to remember the fallen, to stand in solidarity with their loved ones, and remember their sacrifice, and look back through our country's 242-year history to honor all those who have gave their lives for our freedom and liberty, let us recommit to ourselves to remind all Americans of the true meaning of Memorial Day. I got up this morning in preparation for this, and this is where I depart from the script so everybody gets worried. I got up this morning and I watched Good Morning America, and I watched Coast Guardsmen and Marines in their studio, young men and women that are still ready till this day to make that commitment to make a difference. And I think about a young man, an Oviedo native, as many of you know, I am a Central Florida native who, one November, went out on a patrol, was blown clear of his Bradley fighting vehicle, but entered under small arms fire and removed six of his brothers from that same burning vehicle. That young man is Sergeant Alwyn C. Cash, a Central Florida fallen hero that allows us to stand here today. When we do this time and take time to do simple remembrances of them by visiting memorials and cemeteries and placing flags and flowers on the graves of those who have fallen before us, or we fly the U.S. flag at half-staff until noon, we pledge again to help the widows and children and the orphans and, and each and every citizen in America to be and be about a difference. We can also do this in a collective way by participating in the National Monument of Remembrance, a call to voluntarily and informally pause at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Wherever you are, just take a moment. If you're driving, keep driving. 
I don't want to be the cause of a report that he has to fill out. But if you have a moment at 3 o'clock, stop and think about Sergeant First Class Alvin C. Cash. Stop and think about Staff Sergeant Miller. Stop and think about our fallen heroes, our gold star families who don't have that brother or that sister or that uncle or that father or that husband. Stop and remember them at 3 o'clock this afternoon who died in the service to this great nation. By way of history, the National Moment of Remembrance was established by Congress in 2000. It reportedly came about after a group of small children, not like our young Marines here, were touring the U.S. Capitol and were asked about the meaning of Memorial Day. Their reply, it's the day the pool opens. When I hear a story like that, I can't help but be reminded by the words of Calvin Coolidge, who in a speech not long after the end of World War I said that the nation which forgets its defenders will itself be forgotten. That's why our observance of this day, understanding and respecting its true meaning, is so important to all of us and our future generations. Ever since the eight members of the Lexington militia lost their lives in the first battle of the American Revolution, nearly 1.2 million service members, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, have made that ultimate sacrifice. It is our sacred duty to ensure that they are not lost that they are not lost to history. From John Brown, Samuel Hadley, Caleb Harrington, Jonathan Harrington, Robert Monroe, Isaac Muzzy, Asahel Porter, and Jonas Parker, who perished on the Village Green at Lexington in April 1775, to Sergeant First Class Mihail Golan, who died January 1, 2018. As a result of wounds he sustained while engaged in combat operations in Nangarhar Province, Afghanistan. Golan, a Special Forces Weapons Sergeant assigned to the 10th Special Forces Group, Airborne, was born in Riga, Latvia, August 20, 1983. He moved to the United States in October 2004 and enlisted in the U.S. Army from Fort Lee, New Jersey, January 5, 2005. I think it a privilege to call out an immigrant serving in our U.S. Armed Forces, making a difference in our U.S. Armed Forces. Sergeant First Class Golan deployed to Afghanistan in September of 17 in support of Operation Freedom Sentinel. Prior to this deployment, Golan deployed three times. He deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom from September 2006 to November 2007, and twice to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom from February 2009 to February 2010, and again from December 2011 to October 2012. Let us keep Sergeant First Class Golan and his family in our thoughts, along with others who paid that ultimate price for freedom and their families. As we think about them and all those families, we are reminded that the world remains a very dangerous place and that our soldiers are in harm's way all across the globe. That fact came home last October when four soldiers were killed patrolling with forces from Niger. Staff Sergeants Brian Black, Jeremiah Johnson, and Dustin Wright and a Florida native, Sergeant LaDavid Johnson, were training local forces as part of a multinational response to the threat that violent extremists posed in their region. Of course, Memorial Day is not about any particular branch of service. We remember everyone, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, and Marines, who have made the ultimate sacrifice for this nation. In closing, as we honor our fallen this Memorial Day, in this, the 100th year since the signing of the armistice that ended World War I, I'm reminded of the words of President Woodrow Wilson when he spoke at Francis Serene Cemetery on Memorial Day 1919. The fallen who lie here are a unique breed. They crossed the seas to a foreign land to fight for cause which they did not pretend was peculiarly their own, but knew was the cause of humanity and mankind. They did not come across the sea merely to defeat the enemy. They came to defeat forever the things which the enemy stood, the sort of power that meant to a certain world, the arrogant self-dominance which they meant to establish, and they came moreover to see to it that it would never be a war like this again. And in their loss and the loss of those before and since, these fallen heroes remind you what America said she was born for. She was born 
she said, to show mankind the way to liberty. She was born to make this great gift of freedom a common gift. And I ask all of you to join in this common cause. Where we need wear no uniform except the uniform of the heart, closing ourselves with the principles of right and saying to everyone everywhere, you are our brothers and sisters, and we invite you into the comradeship of liberty and of peace. As a native of Central Florida, a young guy that was born in Sanford, grew up in Oviedo, moved upstate New York, but I returned home to continue service in this great state, this great nation. I just ask you to embrace each other. Let us look past our differences because heroes comes in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Let us not just be reminded of what the media represents as a veteran or as a hero. Let us look about this audience and know that heroes come from all backgrounds, they walk in all areas, and they are our sons and daughters that serve proudly without reservation. When we have succeeded in this, when we have ensured liberty and peace, when nations and peoples join us in this great cause, then we will have no more fitting tribute than to honor those today who have given it all, those who gave their all so that we may live free. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom isn't free. Thank you so much for allowing me to share with you this morning. Thank you for your kind word, Mr. Braswell. As a community where privileged to have you share your very strong and powerful message with us this morning and for all your service to our country. Now I ask you if you would uh, please rise and join Mayor Jacobs in laying a wreath in honor of the fallen. Once you place the wreath, please remain standing for the playing of taps. Thank you. You may be seated. It is uh, moments like this that uh, brings the pain back. Uh, in uh, 2004, as chief, uh, chief of staff for the 3rd Infantry Division, uh, I, uh, I had to officiate uh, funerals and memorial services for 44. Have my voice. And many others before and after. Let's also uh, then uh, re please recognize uh, our proud veterans choral. Choral? Would you please stand and be recognized? Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you. And he thought I could not see him, but uh, we need to recognize as well uh, that a, a man that has led the staff to a beautiful, great service to our veterans throughout Central Florida, uh, at, at the Legnona Veterans uh, VA Hospital, uh, Dr. Tim Lizard, please, please stand. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much for taking care of our veterans and their families. At this moment, I would like to invite First Sergeant Dela Spew Jones to offer our benediction. First Sergeant Jones is a strong advocate for veterans in our community and serves on multiple veteran boards and organizations. It is my honor to serve the community alongside her. First Sergeant. It is an honor to have served and continuing to serve those who are serving. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, continue to bless this nation and the flag we serve. We're asking that you continue to endow all gathered here today and send us away with strength and positive vibes for the journey that is ahead. Let us lend strength to one another and pray for the welfare of this community. Let us continue to lift our hearts and memory of those who have died in service to this great nation. They suffered and died so that we could be free and secure. May their memories be more than a distant shadow for their dreams were left unfulfilled and lives taken far too soon. Let each and every day remind us to pray for the safety of our brothers and sisters still in uniform who stand the, at the tip of the spear of our nation. We also remember the families of our troops. We ask for your unique blessings to fill their homes, and we pray your peace, provision, love, and strength will fill their lives. We ask that, the, that a shield be provided above and around all so not a single service member perish ever again. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Thank you, President. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you all once again for joining us. Uh, may today serve as a renewal of our dedication to serve, who have given so much in service to our country. As you depart, we hope you enjoy a musical selection by the Winter Park High School Band Brass Quintet. It was an honor to be here today with you today, and it is an honor to serve those that have served and continue to serve this great nation. This concludes our ceremony. God bless.